You're first. <clears throat> Hello, horses. Hey guys, talk him out of racism. That's not my goal. If he wants to be racist, that's okay. Oh, Mr. Girl, Max Carson, can you hear me, sir? I can hear I, you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Uh, um, does it sound good? Am I using the right mic and everything? Yes. See you though. Are you gonna? Are you going on camera or no? Oh shit. No, it's okay either way. But wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, yeah, You're yeah, yeah. You're off screen right now, anyway. Um, they can't yeah, I'm see. coming. On, I'm I'm coming on camera. I just gotta. Okay, yeah, I know how that goes. My, I have my shit fucked up half the time. Uh, I, <laughs> all right, exactly. well, work on that. Rich is not here yet, anyway, and I gotta turn these off because I told you I was from hell. Send three dollars. Ha ha, Dick. I hear you broke your leg before your big trip. Oh, I'm squished. Hang on, I gotta fix this. Ghost. And yes, I regret right. the booster. Now let me turn those off because. Cause I did. I did say that I would do that. Uh, even though we haven't started yet, technically. Um. Okay. So we're waiting on Mr. Spencer. Let me see here. I'll check in. Uh, I look squished. You are squished. You gotta change it to, um, uh, to HD or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Resolution. There we go. All right. Now let me switch over. Well, I'll just leave it like this for a second. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, does does uh, Ralph sound okay to you guys? Well, other than being <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're just waiting on Richard. Uh, I'll send him another. Man, fuck. I'll send him a text, too, actually. Hold on. Uh, since you're already here, oh man. Okay, so I'll go ahead. You can talk. I'll mute your tab, and you can talk to your audience too. And I'll until. Okay, until cool. Yeah, yeah. Just let me that'll know. Work. Yeah, that worked better. And I'll let you know when, when we're ready. All right. Um. <clears throat> Good luck. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Still waiting for a stream without technical problems. Fuck you, motherfucker. Is it gonna be awful? I don't think so. I don't. I. I'm not planning on arguing with him about anything. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be just fine. Yeah, I know. There's something about the way he talks that just makes people like want to fight each other. But I'm gonna resist that. Uh, oh, I guess I'll get. Um, Oh no, I can't really get it ready until he uh until he gets here. Are you going to tweet the URL to the stream? No. Should I? I guess I should. Sure. That's what that would be a smart thing to do. So yeah, well, Mr. Girl returns. Mr. Girl talks to Richard Spencer. Share. All right. I've tweeted it. <clears throat> I wonder if Richard knows anything about Mr. Girl. Yeah, that was a problem with the last one. Um, I feel like if you don't know anything about me, then it's fine. And if you know a lot about me, then it's fine. But if you only know 45 minutes of research about me, then it's it's we've got an uphill battle to fight. 
You should try to corner him into admitting it isn't about race, but rather about IQ to prove he's not actually racist. <laughs> and well, I did that already. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't think that uh, Richard Spencer feels that way, though. I don't. Uh, he says he's an identitarian, so I think he would say that it's about like collectivism and identity, rather than. If Richard Spencer were black, I don't think he would. Um, I think he would just be like a, a super like like Black Panther like, like a, I don't know super intense like BLM person. I, um. He thinks white people are superior. But I don't think, that informs his wanting an ethno state. I think he just, thinks it's better if people stick to their own groups and he likes whiteness. That's my understanding. Uh. Yeah, yeah, he's all about race. We are in your walls. Hmm. Why would he play mind games? Um, yeah, I don't know. He's interesting. He's he's kind of hard to pin down. I think that's on purpose though. I think we have some similarities in kind of our approaches, but um <clears throat> I think ultimately I want to be I want people to pin me down and I don't know that he does. Uh so if he doesn't want to be then I guess I will not try. Okay, so hold on, let me unmute the tab. So we're waiting on Richard. Uh, I talked to him last night and uh you know, it's good to go and everything. Uh but yeah, uh, yeah. I can't control those types of things. Uh so I understand. I understand. So we're waiting for him to get here. We do have uh, a streamer over on Cozy. He's, you know, I don't know, three to 500 views, uh, kind of a American first guy who wanted to call in and talk to you, but it's not part of the program. So I was going to, if you want to do that, if not, uh, it's okay because it's not really uh, part uh, of the program. Uh, what does he, he want to talk about? Well, that's a good question. I'll, <laughs> I'll see what he says here. Yeah, I'll see what he says here. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So, what do you want to talk about? <clears throat> I mean, I just a conversation, huh? <laughs> oh, the wonders of live. Oh, he is coming. He is coming. Oh shit. Okay. 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 Yeah, we usually do start then. I was going to say, Richard doesn't usually miss them. I was like, oh. Okay, all right. Well, good. Well, okay, so uh, I did talk to him. I thought it started at 10. Uh, and to be fair to him, we usually do start at 10. The last one, matter of fact. Oh, was, yeah, okay. My sh yeah, a lot of times when I bring on guests, they come on at 10. So that's pretty normal. He said, um, hey, sorry, thought we're starting at 30. One sec, so. Uh, shouldn't be too long. Maybe we'll bring Dalton in as a caller later. You say you want to talk to Richard, really. Uh, so if we have time for a caller segment. Uh, I don't really see much limits on, on what we're doing here. Let me switch tabs. Uh, to the I had an echo time. earlier. Do I, do I still have No, I don't, I don't hear it anymore. I think I'm, I think I'm good. No, you sound fine. And for those who don't know, we're not even going to do. I don't really see a point. Well, maybe we'll stu still do intros just to, like, introduce each you know the two people right to each other um yes. but it's not, a debate. it's not a debate well i mean that's just you know you have to have some type of structure but uh other than that i don't really think you know i'll just be a referee or whatever and um kind of just a discussion on on wherever it goes i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen really that's me neither i don't i don't know either i just want to uh i just want to get to know him i guess and like um try to um try to understand him in a way so that I, I i i guess like i want people to understand each other so i if he and i can understand each other uh, that would be a step in the right direction i think 
Now, I want to say this. When we switch tabs here, it's going to say versus because I don't have a special set for. I it. understand. It's I, a, am it's... Gonna get, I, I am going to get that set, though, because we've had discussions like this before that where a person was like, ah, you know what? I don't really want it to be versus or whatever. And then we've had verses that end up actually just being discussions, too. Um, right. But I want to be clear. This is not really a debate or a versus type situation. Uh, it's just a discussion. But uh, I had to do that because of the setup of the cameras and all that. So. Uh, there he is, right on time, right on time. Uh, Mr. Spencer, how you doing, sir? Hey, how are you? I apologize. Oh, it's I, all good. No, it's I have, uh, Don't even worry about it, because we usually bring people on at 10 anyway. When you said that, I was like, yeah, you know what? That's completely... Well, that's usually what you do. So really, this is entirely your fault. Yeah, right. I'll just take the blame. <laughs> uh, okay, now... <laughs> Now let me see if I can get you guys pinned on the screen here. So Yeah, I'm trying to do that too. Yeah, okay. So I got you on the Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh I need you on the right. So yeah, that's the Okay, now say something, uh, Max. Yo, hello, 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 hello. Okay, no no no, no. I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh oh no wait, did I pin I actually pinned the wrong one. Okay. This is like, I'm going to have to figure this out better. All right, now say something. Yo, hello, hello. Test, test, test. There you go. There you go. All right, now I got you pinned. Now, Richard, you say something. Richard, your camera, I don't know if it's on or not, but. I just turned it on, actually, and I'm seeing it on my screen. There you go. I got you yeah. both up. No need to waste any more time. I'll let you, uh, since you've been here, Max, and Richard just got here, he's getting his bearings a little bit, still probably getting everything figured out. I'll let you start off. Again, not a debate. It's just a discussion, but I still figured we'd have uh, a little minimal intro or whatever. Introduce, you know, introduce yourselves or whatever. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, I'm I'm Mr. Girl. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a rapper. I'm a Twitch streamer. And... Uh, I guess my content's mostly about trying to bridge political divides and and uh, get people to empathize with and understand each other. And so I'm obviously uh, very interested in talking to Mr. Spencer here um, mm -hmm. about that, as as people have a lot of trouble empathizing with him and accuse him of, of being unempathetic himself. So I think uh, I, I'm just it's interesting to me. Good. Yeah, it's I, it's my pleasure to talk with you, Mr. Girl. Um, I am huge on TikTok, uh, Twitch, and uh, Snapchat, and um, all those platforms. I, I am just well known and beloved. Uh, just kidding. yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So no, I'm, I'm Richard Spencer. I am uh, who I am. I guess we can see if I um, fit the DSM five category of a uh, uh, sociopath. Um, after this conversation is done. I do have a lot of empathy though. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, well, I wanted to ask you like how, how personal uh, of a conversation do you want to have? Or I, I've noticed that I watched a bunch of your interviews and um, people kind of attack you uh, out of the blue, like, they'll try to get you to let your guard down and then throw something in about your personal life and then bring it back right. to politics. And then they're, they're constantly just trying to like jerk you around. And I find it very uh, ugly and I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So, um, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm trying to match my camera angle with yours. One second. Yeah, we can get personal. Um, I, I would just say, okay. you know, there, there are, there are certainly some things that I don't want to talk about or, or something like that, but, okay. um, if, if so you're just, acting in, if you're acting in good faith, then I'm not going to have any problem. I'm going to try to ask everything in good faith. Uh, I have had issues with people thinking I'm not in good faith when I am. So if I say something or bring something up that you just don't want to talk about, um, I, but like, just tell me, like, I don't, I don't want to do the thing where, sure. If you say, I don't want to answer that, then I'm like smirking and I'm like, oh, well, of course he doesn't want to, like, I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> right, right, no, I understand. No, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't really have anything to hide and, you know, there's there's some, th you know, there's, there's some things that are just kind of nasty and 
personal or you know so on that have been made public to some degree or there are rumors about it or insinuations yeah. or vague accusations and you know i'd rather not just like delve into those things okay but, um, uh so if yeah. i if i do just let me know sure um your david pakman interview mm. did you remember that i i definitely remember doing it i remember a few moments from that uh yeah he was like a he was a dick uh it, i don't remember it that way actually i don't think it was the worst Maybe you're used to it. I am. I am used to it. I mean, I, I think when I make a little bit of a breakthrough as a liberal, I think I count it as a win. Oh, okay, I see. You're. He was less of a dick than you thought he was going to be. So it, it's your your bar is very low. A bit. I don't. I don't remember him being the biggest dick, to be honest. But maybe okay. you know what is it? As time goes on, the past becomes more golden and the future becomes more gray or whatever line from Watchmen. <laughs> I love Watchmen. It's my favorite book. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, not my favorite. It's definitely up there though. I think it's a great graphic novel. And I thought Zack Snyder's movie wasn't faithful in some ways, but I think no. it's very, very cool. And it was cool, so but I, it I was not, it. it did not capture the magic. Uh huh. Yeah. There are a couple of things I could go into with it. I think he kind of Gentile, Watchmen in a way it's kind of more interesting when those characters are Jewish but uh, it's Zack Snyder so. well I mean I, I I think it's it adds another layer that was intended by the author and Zack Snyder in his way took that layer away but you know I still think I, I actually like Zack Snyder a lot I like his films I like half of his films hmm. some of them are pretty bad i think they all look yeah. great though yeah and they're kind of bombastic and 80s montage um yeah i thought man of steel was a really good movie although i didn't like it when i first saw it mm -hmm. but i appreciated it later for what he was trying to do full on jesus jesusification of of Superman and um, I like the Snyder cut, which I saw recently. And I think some yeah. of his movies are maybe almost like I saw his zombie film on Netflix and it was, you know, I don't know, kind of, kind of bubble gum, you know, like I don't, I don't really remember anything about it. It was just Zack Snyder, you know, amazing shots and bombastic action, but yeah. you know, no, there, there really. But, uh, but yeah, I think I he's an interesting way. Uh, <laughs> But you you were born the same year as Richard Donner's Superman. That is true. I, is it nineteen seventy eight? Is that when that it, movie? Came? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, uh, is that you, that has to be you, you you do like that better than Man of Steel, right? No, no, I think I would prefer Man of Steel. Wow, but I do okay. I do like Donner's film. It's well, a, it's a good that's movie. the most upsetting view I've ever heard you espouse. <laughs> um, and hopefully this interview will be good then if that's the most upset I make you. <laughs> well, no, it, it won't. It's going to be ugly. But at that, I, you just are yeah. underestimating how upsetting that is. Um, <laughs> I, do you know anything about me? I know a little bit about you. I've watched some videos of, you, of yours from YouTube. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I would say that one of them that I watched was quite negative, but um, and I've seen you've, you know, gotten into discussions with Vouch and Destiny kind of from that world. Yeah. Um, again, I take every one as they are, you know, it, it it doesn't matter in a way where you're coming from. It's what how you're speaking to me right in this uh, moment. Can okay, I have a yeah, conversation that's... with you? So All it's right, cool. not a big deal. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so in in kind of broad strokes, my understanding is that your stance is that anti-white sentiment is on the rise. It is actually this this was your stance. I don't know if I don't know if um, you still are aligned with this, but I'm, I'm going to try to, in broad strokes, 
uh, say my understanding. Sure. Ant Anti-white sentiment is on the rise. It's basically okay to hate white people in, uh, in progressive or liberal like culture. Um, it's okay to discriminate against white people in certain situations. And you're disturbed by this. You want an ethno state at some point down the line, um, as do many other races, in your view. And in, in Israel right. for white people. Okay. I mean, do you, do you want me to go? Because I, I feel like I don't disagree profoundly with anything what you, you just said. I, I think that I, I would have some more nuanced takes yeah, of course. On, on all of those things. I, but, yeah, I know. And, and I think there's also a tendency. I mean, it's less so now. Now the spotlight's not on me and I'm able to ex dilate on things and be kind of self-critical and maybe question presumptions that I had. But, you know, when people got to know me in 2016 and 2017, it was exactly as you say, you know, okay. it was like white people were rising up. We, we've had enough. We're not going to take it anymore. Yeah. And Trump is our existentialist president, basically. Right. You know, that, that's what you said is fair. I, I would I would bring a lot of nuance to all of those things that you just said, though. OK. Because in uh, many ways, we hate ourselves more than anyone else hates us. But go on. White people? Yes. I, I think the white guilt complex is, is profound. And we can't really understand these questions without addressing that. But uh, yeah, that disturbs me. And I um, I really I don't like. OK, so I, I'm very anti-identitarian. I would say that that is probably the, the biggest break that I have with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm from Amherst mm -hmm. and, um, I feel like you probably know uh, what that means. Oh yes. I visited Amherst, uh, mm -hmm. back in my high school days. And, I, I, uh, I can't think of a, a town that would hate you more than Amherst. <laughs> right. Like you I don't, I feel like right. there's, but there's then in a weird way. Is there a town like I, I'm at home in those places as well, you know? Yeah. Cause they're very identitarian too. Well, they're identitarian, but I'm not talking about ideology, like just in the kinds of places where I would like to live. Um, oh, and college, where uh, I would, New where England I would appreciate, town. yeah. Where I would appreciate the little cafe and appreciate the used bookstore and appreciate yeah. the kind I used of to work at historical the preservation. Yeah, I think that's one of the places where I would actually feel at home in a weird way. But I take your it's a, it's a very American place. If if yeah. if American places can be more or less American. So, yeah. yeah, I was raised um to believe that diversity is good, racial identification is bad, and then quickly except when black people do it, then it's okay. And when right. Jews do it, an ethno state is okay. So my reaction to that was to say, well, I don't think any of it's okay. So I, I, I'm anti-identitarian across the board. Um, That's I don't want to be consistent. Yeah, I don't want to be part of a group. I don't want to be in the club. I don't want to be in the club with other Jews or or in, uh, fucking anybody. I don't. I don't. I don't even. I don't want to be a Democrat. Um, I feel I'm I'm anti like faction basically. Aren't you going to get bulldozed with that attitude, though? Because at the end of the day, we live in a society and we live on a planet. We live in a, a, a world of groups and groups dominate. And so even if you and I and I actually take you at your word, I think you sincerely believe that. But is that really a good choice? You know, no. And are you really. kind of are you is that a kind of luxury that you have? Yes. as an American in the 21st century, uh, not not just as an American, my... but but as me yeah. specifically. Yeah. I think that I'm able to intermingle very successfully with different groups of people. Um, probably, I can read people very well and communicate with people very well, and I don't get along with everybody, but I. Um, I don't really need the sort of like buffer that being part of a group gives you. 
Mm -hmm. And I also am willing to, like you, um, absorb large, large amounts of vitriol from any uh, uh, limit more people than there are on Earth. So I'm 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 fine with that. So I'd say those two things, um, those make me privileged in a way, mm -hmm. where I don't I don't I don't need a group, and I'm and so I understand why other people would want one or might need one, um, but also. Uh, we're all going to get bulldozed. So I I view it as what what do you want to be doing? What do you want to smear on the pavement after the the bulldozer goes over you? What shape would you like it to be? And and to bring us back to Watchmen, uh, you know when you get exploded in the snow, what do you? What Big, what happy smiling face? Sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm and so like I'm more interested in being the person who's driving the bulldozer over you. Yes, that's kind of absolutely. Yeah. I see you have a very dog eat dog world uh, um, view. It's about winning. I mean, whatever you want to say about Trump, and I've totally rejected Trump, but um, you like the I, winning I think part. There, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's that's what life is about. It's it's about winning, and it's in you know you work within a group to the extent that that group is going to gain more power and have dominate other groups. And if you're not in this to win it, if you're not in this to ultimately dominate the entire planet, then what are we doing really talking about politics? Because politics isn't consensual. It's not art. Politics is about the domination of the physical world and in some ways the mental and spiritual world as well. But I yeah, hate to put it in such brutal terms, but it, I don't know if you do. Uh, I feel like you sort of do <laughs> like putting it in brutal terms. I don't think I don't quite believe you there. Fair. Um, because it's provocative. I think you enjoy the the provocation of putting it in brutal terms. Sure. Um. Yeah, yeah. I see. What I, I there is an annoying um duality to America's view of itself in the world, where we're going to build an empire and um, rule the world basically with an iron fist, but also then say that we love everybody equally and everybody deserves human rights and, and uh, blah, blah, blah. But yes. if, you, if you fuck with us, we'll just um, you know, drop un unthinkably horrible uh, bombs on your country. Yes, and, and additionally, um, I think the individualism and true diversity which you seem to believe in and I, I actually think you are genuine is it's not so much an ideal as it is a management strategy in the sense that this is the tact that america has used to manage an empire and ultimately dominate the planet which it does and has done for my lifetime and mm -hmm. will do i think for for probably maybe my whole lifetime. I don't, I don't think it's all coming down tomorrow morning, but who knows? But it's a you have to understand it as a kind of management strategy and not as an actual ideal. Um, Wait, and but I guess what if it, in, but what if it isn't? What for me, it is an ideal, though. Right. But you're just kind of deluded by what other people tell you. Are, and you're not. Uh, I, I mean, aren't we, sure, aren't we all? We're all we're all influenced. That was a bit harsh statement but you're taking their rhetoric seriously and i don't take their rhetoric seriously i take it as gospel um, right that's an uh, interesting choice of words I'm a, I'm a fanatic it's a religion i i i concede right this. there there are there are well but i think you might be too but i think there but are at the same time i i kind of disobey it like i I see it for what it is, but I want something more. So in that sense, I too am an idealist. I just feel like there's the, the kind of cost, civilizational cost that has occurred due to this, due to America's history and its founding, it, it, its, its founding impulses, which I think were uniquely bad. Um, and you can see those <laughs> in the founding documents. Um, which I totally reject. What um, equality? From the philosophically equality speaking. Yeah. Um, Declaration of Independence, quite bad. Um, but also just the kind of <laughs> clockwork mechanism of the state. It's, 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 it doesn't describe any state in existence. 
and this kind of you know cutesy Hobbesian. Well, it's a dream. It's, actual... it's a it's called the American dream for a reason. Right. Yeah. Never it can, connected it with, to reality. Well, but it's a we it's, could a, it's, it's something so to strive for. Things. Yes. Is it though? Like well, we, is it yeah. actually that great? The other aspect of the American um, you know situation was so problematic was just the large population of religious fanatics, Calvinists in particular, who okay. made up the population. And I, and I think that led to a certain type of American type. I think they're kind of like two American types, one which I like and the other which I despise. There is the American type of the frontier that had to go out into space and kind of go reduce civilization in a way. Like, move from a European society of trains and it, and hop into a canoe and in mm -hmm. a way become a savage as a way of progressively moving outward in this con this continent there, there is something about the west and so on that i do have a romantic fascination with and that i love um i do think that there is a pe peculiar type of american puritanical school marm or just moralist, an anti-intellectual moralist that is kind of descended from the John Winthrop types and, and a deeply egalitarian moralist. So there, there is a new hierarchy based on your puritanism or your, your morality that I just despise. And I think that was the, the real founding of America came on a ship uh, with John Winthrop. Even before he set foot on America, he had already imagined it. And well, wait, that... you, you, can I ask a question about you despising it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, you definitely despise hypocrisy. I sense that. Yes. You also despise un unrealistic idealism? Not necessarily. I kind of, I have a certain fascination with real idealists who are trying to advance civilization. No, I, I despise the Puritan attitude that has really inflected American thinking in ways that I don't think we fully understand. I think someone like Elizabeth Warren is a deeply American type and probably mm -hmm. genetically related to Calvinists who came here. We America, there, it was this like, you know, in some ways, like if you could survive the West, the frontier, if, there was a there was a selection process going on. And I think in, in many ways it selected for a good type, a kind of hardened badass who was very cooperative was an individualist of sorts but was very cooperative um i also think there was a kind of selection that took place in america with the original founding puritans and they do believe in the gospel and they they are egalitarian there's a new kind of they're a priestly type as well and yes i absolutely despise those people i don't think they add anything to civilization because uh, you're saying moral, they're moralizing to the point where they're choosing being good over winning. Well, yeah, but they're just boring. I mean, they have won in some way. <laughs> They've been successful. Unfortunately. Well, what do you, so where do you where do you put me in all this? I don't quite know. I think you are a genuine liberal. I think you you're an you have a lot of open mindedness, and you're high in kind of agreeable traits. And I think you genuinely are intellectually curious. That's just my take yes. on having talked with you. And I would say that you have your haters online and I kind of have a different impression of you talking with you. So that's that's my assessment of you. I think I think I I think you are genuine. I don't I don't think you're um you're pursuing an agenda. I think you have a genuine op open-minded attitude. Well, I try I think agenda implies that the person is not saying what they're trying to do. Right. So like I if I tell you at the outset, like you're an identitarian and I my channel's trying to dismantle identitarianism, um, I feel like that I hope buys me I'm some I'm cool with it because you're open about what you're doing. <laughs> right, exactly. Like if I'm trying to trick you into contradicting yourself and then say, Well, but uh in two thousand eleven, didn't you say then then um I feel like that becomes an agenda. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um also, the other thing I don't like about when people do that is that it implies that you have to cheat to win. And like I, mm. I, I, I believe 
and part of the reason so people are like uh, some people are critical of me t for talking to you yeah sure and i assume some people are critical of you for talking to me yes and and i want to believe that if we all talk to each other um the the better ideas will prevail which i believe are mine uh and and you may believe the same thing so i don't uh, and, and, and if we talk to each other, I honestly. believe that to a degree, but I, I agree with your basic sense that it's good to talk. Like one of the things about me is that I, I really am willing, like I would love to go have conversations with some liberal YouTubers or, yeah. you know, bread tube. I actually think that I can add to the conversation whenever I've mentioned by, and I, cause I'll, I'll sometimes watch them. Uh, whenever I get mentioned, it's like a quick, you know, kibosh, you know, yeah. like they'll, they, they'll sometimes even say something like, Oh, he's kind of weird. He voted for Biden or like, he's, he's actually, like, he doesn't actually believe that he's a little bit different. And then they'll be like, no, no, he's a shit, shit bag. You know, he's a turd. Don't talk. You know, there, there's this yeah. just like immediate, um, you know, uh, uh, uh uh, what, what's the right word just like um you know control what is it control a delete you know it's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. we're not <laughs> well, contemplating any of this stuff it's very funny. okay uh, you you have said and done a few things that i think make people think that um you're a nazi basically that and that you're pretending you know when they say like he went full mask off about yeah. whoever. So there are, so there's that audio recording and then right. the hail Trump, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think that no, nobody trusts anybody. So I don't, I don't think this is that unique to you. I think all of us have moments or things we said or did that people take to be maybe because they want to believe it. That's the, that's the real you. Yes. And then anything else you say is seen as subterfuge and there's no way to um, escape. I that. agree. And that that the audio recording from that was released, I think, in 2019 or some something yeah. like that. I mean, that that was used precisely to to undermine destroy you. me. Yeah, yes. it was it was promoted by um, uh, Milo. It was it was yeah. secretly recorded, apparently, by some Catholic uh, person who's now running for office, you know, uh, what a surprise. Um, and it was, yeah, it, it was, it was released, I think shortly after I went on CNN and attacked Trump. And then shortly after, um, I was critical of the Groypers. So, I mean, I, I think there was a, a kind of agenda there for sure. And, um, and the other thing is that like, first off, very few people ask questions about like, why were you recording this person in a moment of extreme stress, you know, yeah. like uh, that was a moment, you know, I was at a point of just it, total exasperation and I indulged in power fantasies, you know, mm -hmm. and it, you know that I didn't say that publicly. I didn't say that to anyone and I wouldn't say that to anyone. I, I was just out of my mind, you know, and because I, I felt that Charlottesville had been such a disaster. And so it, you know, it was the worst aspect to me, but also notice it was secretly recorded, which is yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not illegal, but highly unethical. And then the other thing is, where's the rest of that recording? You know, like that, you know, you, you find a 15 seconds or 30 seconds. I don't know how long it is. Um, where's the, also that secret recording where I say something that is honest or something. None of that's there. It's, it's sure. pure destruction. And, okay. Do, so, yeah. do, do are you okay with me pushing you on the recording a little, or what? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I, are you tired of talking about this? Oh, well, and I, 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 I know you're tired. I'm sorry. That's a disingenuous <laughs> question. Obviously, you're tired of talking about it. <laughs> I want are to you talk so, about it. No. Are you so tired no. of talking about it that we can't? You can talk about it. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So you gotta from from the point of view of a so let's say a bread tuber the response is going to be well on my worst day i'm even when i'm losing my mind i don't scream that like we're, i'm going to dominate like you know whatever slur so yeah um 
is that evidence that you uh, harbor like deeply held racial hatred? Well, I mean, you, I think you, you have to put it into context. I mean, one thing that was very true about the 2016 and 2017 alt-right is that it was a big tent movement where effectively anything goes. And there, there was a, you don't see this type of uh, camaraderie or esprit or something anymore. Mm -hmm. Now it's very, now the movement is very fragmented and kind of inner looking and, and, and infighting and so on. But at that point, it was a kind of like, we love Richard Spencer, we love Andrew Anglin, we love Donald Trump, we love some random frog Twitter guy who's dropping the N word. We love Ricky Vaughn. We, it, it was everyone was on the team because we felt like we were winning and we felt like it was a just a big tent mass movement. And I think that to be critical of me, I think I kind of indulged in stuff that I now find really cringe. You know, I okay. definitely find hail Trump cringe now, although I didn't I don't say it now. I said it in the moment when we were all exuberant. Sure. And I, you know, and, and I, I think I was probably also kind of playing to that crowd in the sense of I was just being like the biggest badass. Like, a, you know, I, I have been I was not a great athlete by any stretch, but I did play on the football team and I can remember totally insane halftime speeches from coaches and other players about, you know, eating the other team and, sure. you know, okay, raping like, them or whatever. So it was, there was a little bit of that in there too. Yeah. And so it, look, it, it, it was a terrible moment. If you want to say that, that there are some problematic aspects. I don't want to say of, anything. I just, okay. I just want to, I just, I want, well, I'm like, giving you the context. I don't want the context. I want, I want, like, okay, if I, so the thing people hate me the most for so far is saying that the girls and cuties were hot in my review. I saw that, yes. Okay, so you can imagine if you said, um, you know, you know, I like talking, you seem like a cool guy, but like, why the fuck did you say that? And I'm like, listen, you, you <laughs> let me take you back to it was it was 2019. The exuberance was in the air. We were all very excited. Like, I can tell you about some halftime speeds. You'd be like, OK, well, like, yeah, but what about the part where you said the girls and cuties were hot? I feel like like I, I get what you're saying that, like, we all say things we don't mean in, in, a, in a moment of excitement. But is that is that your answer that you didn't mean it or no, that you so no, that you no. sort of mean it or My that other Everybody holds those beliefs uh, no, to some degree. I and... think my answer is that that there 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 probably is a kind of reptilian brain Richard Spencer who said something like that. Okay. There it, that 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 person I said it and I will own it. There there is that person inside me, but okay. that's not the only thing what I am, and that really is something that. I am aware of, and that's not something that I find at all, you know, productive or anything. I, I have, you know, it, it was a very bad moment, but I, I will own it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to evade any responsibility for it, but you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that that's almost the best I can do in a way because it's not me it is taken out of context it's it's a worse side of me but i think you can you can in a way see like i began this conversation talking about you know groups dominate and bulldoze others you can yeah. almost see that it's rant like the green like, it's like the green goblin exactly or you can see that rant is kind of like a horrifying and in a way kind of juvenile or scatological version okay. of something are, that i would express in a higher i, I understand <laughs> sure. that yeah 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 but, i get what you're saying are, are but, you are you horrified like, i actually am more nuanced and i am a reasonable guy i mean i like i piss off a lot of people yeah. but i also pride myself in like talking with people yeah and they genuinely like when we're when i'm one on one with someone um not ethan's audience who are totally they no, hate me beyond measure, but and they're they're sending super chats. So there's there's that mediation, you know, in the sense of like 
you will say something to someone on Twitter or on 4chan that you'd never say to their face, you know, in a million years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so it's mediated. And so I, I think when I can cut through mediation with people, I really can talk to them. And, I, uh, I, and I'm in a way proud of that. You're very good at uh, pissing people off. Uh, another thing I've noticed in your interviews. Yeah. Um, I feel like you'll... Uh, you'll kind of stress test the person to be like, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, attack me, just do it now. And uh, people will usually, uh, you're pretty good at it. Like if the person is going to snap, um, you're, you're pretty good at determining when and how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, I'm ready to move on from the, uh, the outburst. Um, unless you have anything else you want to say about it. I don't have anything else to say about it. Okay. I'm a big Mel Gibson fan. We have one thing in common. <laughs> you got that one thing in common. De deranged outburst. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, people are people are like, well, they're like, but you're they're like you're a Jew, like Mel Gibson hates you. And I'm like, well, if only when he's really drunk. <laughs> but that's that's okay. Uh uh Okay, so I didn't know that. So I, I've been arguing against uh, people saying it's okay to punch Nazis mm -hmm. on Reddit. I've been arguing with people about this for years. Mm. But I didn't know that they were specifically talking about you. You didn't until, know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay. Until like a, like a week ago. I've wow. I've known who you, I've known who you were for uh since I think since I was in college in like tw 2006 probably the first uh -huh. time I heard of you. Um Oh, interesting. Okay. That was very early. Yeah. Interesting. Um Uh yeah, so I don't I don't think it's okay to punch Nazis. I don't think you should punch anybody unless um you're defending yourself when, and, and of course people will say like, well, I am defending myself, but like, that's not, that's not what I mean. Yeah. Um, do you, have you, I'm glad I have at least one defender on Reddit. <laughs> yes. I, I will, uh, I will die to defend your right to, for free speech. I don't, I, I again, like if you believe that good ideas will rise to the top, and that's part of your justification for free speech, then when you punch somebody for talking, you're kind of implying that their ideas are better than yours. Yeah. Um, so you shouldn't do that. And and it's immoral to uh, punch people on top. Of, so strategically, morally, uh, but pretty much across the board, I, I think it's pretty uh, abhorrent. Yeah, fair enough. Um. What do you think about political violence? I assume when it's directed at you, you're certainly against it. But in general, um, I've heard you. I've heard you denounce it. So, what well, I mean, you know, I, I think before you engage in in moralizing, I, I think you have to kind of analyze the situation and see what's happening. I, I do think that we have entered a world in which political violence is going to be more prominent. And that mm -hmm. just is what it is. Like, I'm not going to more, you know, putting I'm neither an endorsement or a condemnation. It just simply is what it is. I mean, okay, so I can remember. This is the bulldozer. Well, thinking. no, let me. No, no because it's, it's a little bit deeper than that, because it, it, there are there are times when political violence is unthinkable in the sense that I mean, I can remember being because I'm older than you are. I can remember being in college in like the turn of the century. And there was a general feeling that political violence was just over in a way. Like, what, you're, what are you going to do? Go protest? What? You know, we, we have it all. Like, go buy a dot-com stock and make money. Like, there, there wasn't a real cause. Yeah. And there's certainly, you know, Antifa might have existed at that point, but it, it was, you know, 10 guys living in Brooklyn or something. And um, something like J6 or whatever, unthinkable. And yeah. so now, and I, and I think the, the, the punch 
of Richard Spencer and the whole punch a Nazi debate and whatever and all those memes that were made. I think that that was indicative and it was in a way a kind of small aspect of something that is now growing and that is very real. But this even this kind of ebbs and flows. I don't think we're going to see another BLM summer. And we can talk about reasons for that. But, you know, th these things that can ebb and flow. But I do think it, it does spell a kind of certain instability in America, maybe mental instability as well, and a kind of disintegration. Is that the ashes? Because it's very individualistic. From, are, are those, is that the fire and then the ashes from which the Richard Spencer ethnostate could, uh, Phoenix could rise? Like, I don't like the, using the Phoenix metaphor, but I would say that like, well, the ethno yep. state, the ethno state is a inherently post American formulation. And I do think that a lot yes. of people misunderstood and, and, me because no, of this, because they're like, you want to throw out the blacks and throw out the Mexicans. And I would say, like, no, this is about like reimagining Rome and it's coming after a geopolitical cataclysm. I've always been like very explicit you need, about that but i don't think people get that because they believe need, in america yeah 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 i believe in america okay so you need violence to have the geopolitical cataclysm you need no. violence in the street wait let me let me let me walk through this and you tell me you could say no okay i disagree end. with that first presumption but yeah go on i think Mo political most... violence is a symptom and not a cause i would strongly stress that uh We're i think seeing... it... We're I think seeing... it could I think it could be both. It could be like the broken windows thing. The more the more people who get punched in the face, the more times people storm the Capitol, the more people start to not believe in American democracy, fair elections, blah, blah, blah. I think all these things are symptoms for sure, but they can also contribute to just a sense of unrest. And True, but but an ethno for... state's not going to be built by like a bunch of guys holding up shields and yeah 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 like i I, I understand that's that's yeah. not the phoenix part that's the that's right. the turning america to ashes part that has to come first in in but some I form i think all of it's symptomatic i, I think in, when i look back on it i think the alt-right was actually symptomatic of this what i'm talking about when you but i'm i guess my question is you getting punched in the face is a sign of destabilization of america yes and that destabilization, whether it's through violence or not, is, uh, to quote the Joker, all part of the plan. And so, <laughs> if you so you might be willing to get punched in the face if that means that you are one step closer. Um, to yes and no. I mean, look, it, the the plan is like the force of history. Like, there's no. There's no secret plan that I have to create. Uh, yeah, you might not have to do anything at all. Like, like it might no, no, just no, happen on its I, own. That's not what I said. But okay. I, I do, I do think that America is going down on its own, and I cannot either prevent that or cause it. Like it's, it's like me standing out, and there's this tidal wave coming, and it, it, when you see the tidal wave, like with a tsunami. You can't outrun it. But do you? you know, it's but like, do you? It's so do you want to? But do you want to? Um, you have to. I think. I think you will underestimate your uh, place in history. Uh, as well, as much you. as maybe I'll get all Nick Fuentes now and yeah, say as that God's well, on my side and I'm a <laughs> As as much as part of me wants to call you a megalomaniacal, uh, egotistical maniac, I actually do think that you um, have played and may continue to play a. Um, important role in American history. So I I think if you really wanted to stop it, I don't I don't think you could do it single-handedly just but just the same way uh no one person can start a riot. Right. You can throw a brick through a window and get get um a good chunk of the way there. So I would like I would like it if you wanted to stop the tidal wave. I I I like I love America. Well, in my defense, um I did see the Trump movement becoming extremely toxic and useless. And I did not foresee J6. I was actually kind of laughing about those Stop the Steel rallies. And I was like, ah, it's just, you know, they're just out there having fun or whatever. I did not see something like J6. Now, J6 was uh, quite buffoonish in many ways. 
and I don't think it could have ever succeeded, but it was a kind of attempt at revolution. And, and the mm -hmm. people really believed that, and they said so on their own live streams. Um, but I would say, in my own defense, that part of my, like, just totally dumping Trump and supporting Biden was basically, yeah. like, it was saying, like, listen, guys, Biden's actually not that bad. And Trump really ain't good. And the toxicity of that cult is not leading anywhere good, even if I didn't foresee exactly what it, where exactly it was leading. And well, so in some ways, I do want to kind of hold back the tide if it's not, you know, serving a purpose. You know, if it's if it's just a big fracas and, and you're just going to engage in this, like the most buffoonish coup d'etat attempt of all time then there's no point. There's no point in risking anything for that. There's no point in getting burned by that. What kind of coup would you support? <laughs> if you could, if you could, if you I could have clear. any I kind of any coup against the government, I just want to be clear here. Yeah, we know. Yeah. But I wasn't asking you. I just want to be clear anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. just telling you. Go ahead. If you, if you could have any kind of coup you want, I don't think America, I think the, 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 the fantasy of like, we could pull off a coup and change the course of America. I think America's decline is so big. And even if you take like, let's imagine if Trump pulled it off, you mm -hmm. know, and they, they like canceled the electors and they got new ones and he was in there for another four years, or let's say he just made himself dictator. I don't think that would actually change much of anything. It would just be like a slightly different path towards the same end. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a Hegelian, like logical, there's a logic to history and it leads somewhere type of guy. Yeah. yeah. So, but now would I have enthusiastically, you know, endorsed, like if I were living, cause I am Anglo-Saxon. So I, I've got some German roots and English roots. Like if I were living in Germany, <laughs> during napoleon's invasion would mm. i just be an enthusiastic supporter of napoleon yes if i were living in britain would i have betrayed my own government to support the emperor hell yes okay <laughs> so i'm not against any of these things like more i'm not going to moralize about like you know it's not a democratically elected government or something you know? right you don't uh, do you not believe in you don't believe in democracy well i be, i don't know what believing in democracy means. well yeah you you do you you, uh, you uh, it means that you um sounds like it seems like a god-awful way of choosing leaders to me some kind of popularity <laughs> yeah i mean do we want so to you... take you know, if we you look don't at believe the in democracy. That's what that's all. Right. of the American public, you know, Marvel movies and, you know, uh, uh, gummy bears or whatever. Like, yeah, it doesn't I don't, I'm not sure I want these people making decisions. Now, as it is, I don't think there's any country that's truly democratic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 there, I, I, I get it. You know, we're not yeah, taking do you think, referendum every right. day. Right. I understand. You're, you're saying yeah. you don't believe in it in the sense that you don't think it's actually happening. I don't the way believe it, it is twice. intended to. Right. Yes. I, I, I don't get, believe I, in it. I, get I don't believe it exists. And I, I know. believe it's an ideal. Yeah. I know. So I, I, know. Doubly, I, I was asking about the second part. Yeah. It's definitely not an ideal. I don't I, I think to be to be fair. I think most people there. I think there's a large number of people I'll say who don't think it really exists in practice, but who mm -hmm. want to strive for it as an ideal. So I would say that I, that's, that's probably where I am. I, I, under, I agree that realistically it's flawed and never works quite the way it's supposed to work and often doesn't uh, even come right. close. But as a, as a guiding light. The argument against democracy are Marvel films and Krispy Kreme donuts. Clearly the, clearly, the American public should not be given any I, uh, decision making. Power. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't like, even like, think I. I don't think I agree. Are I think. I think very Marvel. Popular. But they're 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 not that bad though. They're okay. Oh God. Okay, but they're, they're okay. I was going to say something here because the, the, I can make an interesting point about this. Imagine if 
you were a German who was born in, say, 1905. Okay. And you lived a very long life. And you were born in an imperial Germany with a parliament and also a monarch. Mm -hmm. You experienced a cataclysmic world war. You then lived in a democratic republic that was kind of foisted upon the loser of that war. You then experienced a fascist dictatorship for a dozen years. <clears throat> you then experienced a few decades as you reach middle age, uh, a communist dictatorship that maybe kind of reminded you of the fascist one in some ways and part of a Russian empire, mm -hmm. uh, very new stuff. And then as you were reaching about, you know, you're, you're an octogenarian, you actually start to live in a new kind of American democratic unified Germany. You would have experienced, I mean, I don't know how many that is. It's like five or six different types of regimes. Mm -hmm. And I think you would have in different types and different ways of legitimizing the regime and so on. And I think you would probably develop a kind of mature cynicism about the, the people in power. You would say, well, you know, I heard that from the communists. Uh, you know, Hitler said that too, and I'm not going to take this new liberal too seriously. You know, you, there's a kind of mature cynicism, and you don't you you do you believe in Germany in some sense. I mean, obviously, there's like a there's a the German language, and there's a there's a common culture, lots of differences, of course, but a common culture. You know, but you don't the German state. You might have a certain cynicism towards, and um, I think with Americans, it's very different because we haven't experienced that kind of tumult and so you're americans, saying, you're, americans you're believe you, in america much yeah more than I, I don't think they yeah. can imagine you know if, if that that hypothetical person who might very well have existed i'm sure there's actually a, a ton of people who literally lived through but you're saying that german that's Empire. how you you're, you're saying that you have that's the my attitude i'm like yes. that german whereas you have the cynicism of a 119 year old german <laughs> that's what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. and um the, the Americans kind of can't imagine anything else. So like whenever they want to criticize the government, they just want to go back to democracy or like what it means to be a real American. It's mm -hmm. a, a very similar thing of, of like people living in Ru under Russian communism. They would have jokes like we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. And they would kind of like go through the motions of, you know, spouting off Marxist platitudes or whatever. I think Americans are very different in the sense that they genuinely believe in their country yes. and they kind of yes. can't, they don't have an imagination of something other than America. Okay, here's a question. But I say that as a criticism and not I, I know, I know, I know. I, I mean, know. remember the the same word for, you know, believing in something is credulity. I mean, you could also say that they're um gullible. Uh yeah. Democracy requires the belief in democracy. Right. Uh, I, I agree with that. I don't agree with everything else you said. Uh, my, here's my question. Um, what if you're too cynical? Like, so to, to me, and I think maybe most Americans, democracy is like the goal. And then if we slip into a dictatorship, or fascism or any any other really any other form of government we've fallen through the floor that's a failure right um what if you're for wrong? me for wait, me wait. the goal is a higher level of civilization and yeah whatever gets us to that is fine by me okay what if you're what if you're wrong and the what ends if justify the means absolutely what if people uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's another huge disagreement we have. What if people are better than you give them credit for? And They're not. Why? Well, I, I know that. I'm saying in, in a hypothetical. <laughs> in a, in a hypothetical, weird dimension where you're wrong. Um, what if what if democracy is possible? Uh, I'm not sure what the question is here, but let me just get to the end of it. If democracy is possible and uh, all people of all different uh, colors and stripes uh, actually do manage to live together in a, in a collective, uh, you'd, you'd look like an asshole, wouldn't you? 
I don't know what the question is. Do you think it's possible that you're wrong? I guess is my question. Of course, I think it's possible that I'm wrong. Yeah, but so like, like, I, like, I'm, like I'm you, I get you can say, I get you can say everybody else is cynical, but uh, or I, an idealist. Um, it just seems gullible. like uh, gullible. It yeah. seems, yeah, like heartbreakingly cynical and depressing. Yeah. Sorry to burst your bubble. You so haven't. Well. You have you oh no, you <laughs> haven't burst my bubble. Um I'm sorry that you've bursted your own bubble. But I never believed in democracy throughout my entire life. Yeah. I mean, I remember in like middle school reading history books and like really liking Napoleon. And you know, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I just it was just natural, like the people, the villains that were given to me, you know, in education. I, I loved. OK, so you I've seen what is that song by Pet Shop Boys. It's a sin. Do you know the lyrics to that song? There's no. a funny song about being a schoolboy but not learning your lessons. It's all it will come to me. Are we gonna have another karaoke uh, moment later? I saw some people in chat asking for it. Uh, oh, we could definitely do that. Yeah. All right, we might have to finish off uh, with that. Uh, we're gonna take some callers too. I don't want to interrupt too much, uh, but I do know we'll take some callers at some point too. So I threw out the link if people wanna get ready for that. Um, I've seen people ask you the Hitler question a few times. Okay. Which may be another well-worn topic that you are tired of. But can we get through it quickly? Sure. Uh, Hitler is a villain in history books, in yeah. American history books. Was he one of the villains that you liked? He he was... I, I've never been a, a Hitler fanatic or, or anything like that. I've, I've never read Mein Kampf. I've, I've never been obsessed. I, I've, I've read books on the Third Reich. I've never really been fascinated by it. I mean, I, I do think that, um, you know, there are certain commonalities between, you know, Napoleon, Mussolini, Hitler, and other types of kind of leaders like that who were kind of viewed as, as aggressive and conquering and just badass or something. Um, I, I would say this. I, I think it's it is like bad optics or dangerous to, to. I don't think we can ever have like a real down to earth, you know, discussion about Hitler and the way that we can about Bismarck or Martin. Well, Luther. then let's let if you if you. I mean, we can just skip it then. Yeah, I mean, it, because it's so okay. toxic. Because yeah, yeah. It, okay, here's an, here's another question. He's the moral core. He's the anti-moral core of liberalism, and so yes. in some ways, you kind of can't talk about. It's like saying you can. You can like having well. It just depends you, you on your can, goals. If, if you're an historian, maybe you can get away with it, and also if you are bashing him, you can get away with it. But yeah, I mean, I well, I yeah, and in a, a conversation about that. Hitler, I would be bashing him, and so you would be in the opposite corner. So I understand it that probably wouldn't be a good look for me, and it's just not, you know, okay, it's it's not something that motivates me. It's it's not something that okay. I'm passionate about. To be here's honest. a here's a better question. Okay. Have you seen Have you seen Apt Pupil? You know, I haven't, but I I think that that's been recommended to me. I think that you would love Apt Pupil. Uh-huh. Uh on many many levels. Uh, I saw you retweeted the uh Overlook Hotel picture. <laughs> so yeah. I know I know you've got some Stephen King in you. Yeah. Uh it's Although based I'm on a Stephen King more Kubrick fan, but Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I've, yeah, I I had that idea also actually. Yeah. But um it's based on a Stephen King story directed by Brian Singer. Oh, okay. So starring... pedophile I guess that's why. Oh, well, I think he, I think in his defense, uh, I think that, <laughs> that kid was, a, that was, was a joke. By the way. That kid was 15. So uh, t technically not pedophilia. Well, okay. I don't think you can ever win a conversation in which you're making technical distinctions. 
<laughs> on that that subject. But uh, until I, now, I, I, I until I until I just did just now. Now you know that you can. Uh, um, starring um, Ian McKellen and Brad Renfro. Brad mm. Renfro. Um, and David Schwimmer. Mm. And it's about this, uh, I think, high school kid who is questioning American history as it is taught. And then he discovers a uh, a Nazi hiding in his town. Yeah. And then he basically blackmails him into like forces him in to have a relationship with him where he like shows him his uniform and like just basically like uh, just got, gets to know him. Yeah. Um. And then like a bunch of crazy shit happens, but uh, I think you'd like it. I'll put it on my queue. <laughs> That's what I say to people when I'm not going to watch something. No, but... no, uh, <laughs> no, I'll probably watch it. I, I, my queue right now. Yeah. Um, I've never seen Manhunter, and I, 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 so I just put that on my queue, and then I want to see this the movie. movie? That, yeah, it's 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 a. Um, oh, I know what it is. Thomas Harris Harris <laughs> kind of book, yeah. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, I've got, I kind of want a thriller, you know, murder mystery. Thing. Well, and Brian Cox is no Anthony Hopkins, so just be aware true. of that going into it. True. Um, and then I, I actually want to see this film, The Green Knight. Um, yeah. A, a, a lot of people, uh, people in the kind of, you know, alt-right or dissident right or whatever, they're like, oh, it's, you know, they they have an Indian actor as a white man or what, And at you know fair enough but it actually that that criticism bores me at this point and and also it, it actually looks really <laughs> fascinating like visually spectacular so i i definitely i look forward to seeing that yeah i haven't seen that but i'm a big fan of uh a24 okay one other movie question american mm. hist american history x <laughs> i've seen that yeah and uh that's that's I, my that's my idealism that right that's my idealism. I'm sure you hate it. I don't hate it. It's very um, idealistic. It, kind of an interesting film because they, they... What is the name of the lead character played by Edward Norton? Uh, Massive Nazi dude. That's all I remember. Yeah. Anybody? Well, they they make him obviously... That's what I also remember from that movie. Just the curb almost, stomping, almost yeah. actually hurt your teeth is what I always think about when I think of that movie. Yeah, so they they made him horrible, and he in fact murders someone or terribly disfigures the person. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of interesting because when he's giving speeches, he actually sounds a lot like Pat Buchanan. So I think there was a kind of underhanded method mm. of smearing, associating, yeah, of of a kind of associating like what was in the '90s like actually fairly reasonable nationalism with curb stomping and then there's this other layer of irony it doesn't his little brother like get um murdered by a black person or something at the end of the film yes so maybe he was right i don't know i'm not saying he was i'm just saying that seems to be the message of the film or maybe i the well message, i maybe the message is you've got to you've got to be a goody goody liberal regardless of even, I, even you know I th I thought the message was that hate begets hate, and that um, that it uh, you may not be the one to pay the price for your mm. sins. Maybe that that also I could see that as a message. Yeah, um, you might not be the one to pay the price for your sins. That's interesting. Collective punishment in a way. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a great film. I I have seen it. I have no real desire to rewatch it. Okay. Um, but what are my favorite films? Is that a good question? What are I think? Uh, what are the greatest films? Sure. Yeah. American cinema. Sure. Um, I think John Ford is an amazing filmmaker. I I do think The Searchers might be the greatest American film, and it's a very tragic portrayal of the hero in an ironic portrayal of the hero and of, of race, actually. 
Um, that's a that's a John I mean, Wayne it, Western. I'm named after the yes. series, by the way. My parents named me after the lead character. Oh. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they were John um, Sword uh, aficionados. Yeah, it's a great film. Very tra- I mean, the person you're named after is actually kind of a tragic figure who kind of gets expelled, almost kind of loses it. Anyway, I won't give it away. Man Who Shot Liberty Valance is just an amazing Hegelian film. The man who shot Liberty Valance is not the man who shot Liberty Valance. I just think John Ford's great. I love Hitchcock films. Um, I think he's an amazing filmmaker. I guess it is that American cinema. But Yeah. Why not? We'll take it. Um, I don't know. Films, films are nuanced and serious and disturbing and tragic vision of racial conflict that American History X. American History X is, is salacious. It's whatever. Um, the Searchers actually makes it into a tragedy. And I, I would, that's a movie that's worth rewatching and contemplating. I'll put it on my queue. <laughs> Which means you won't watch. No, I actually will watch it. Good. You should watch just, this. Just like, just like you're actually going to watch it after people. Um, I probably will actually watch that. And I probably will watch The Searchers. Good. Uh, okay. A couple other... I have, I have another question. Uh, so in my, my Kumbaya hand-holding uh, racial... I have, I have two questions. Okay, so the first one is... On my mission... Which I will continue on, and my my platform is growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, these people can't get enough of me, you know. The money's coming in. It's it, it all, all in the past three weeks. I've I'm now really? doing content creation full time. I yeah, three weeks ago, I was a popper, and now I'm here. So if, on my mission as I rise to power. I I I I don't like white grievance. Be, um, I want to address white grievance. I don't like ignoring white people. I think being racist against white people is just as bad. I, I you know what? I even think it might be worse than being racist against any other race because it's the only racism where people pat themselves on the back while they're doing it. So I I hate racism. Fair enough. I hate I hate racism against anybody, and I want to. Uh, I want to stop it. And I want people to empathize with and understand the the plight of all people, including white people. Um, I agree, and I yeah. actually think, you know, in a in a funny way, I have more empathy towards other races and their suffering than most all conservatives who in their typical way always want to deny these things. Very yes. similar to J6, how like, oh, J6, it, it never happened. It was just a, a, a friendly walk in the park. And why yeah, are you I've seen your, your tweets about COVID too. They're, in COVID as well, yeah. yeah. But they want to deny everything. One thing they want to deny also, this is a very kind of like Jared Taylor, or Dinesh D'Souza, like pseudo-intellectual of like, oh, well, uh, you know, the the Indians, they, it wasn't that bad. I mean, they, they did bad things to each other. And we were we brought, you know, liberalism. No, we didn't. Yeah. We actually conquered the continent. And there was a tremendous amount of bloodshed and arguably genocide and dispossession, unarguably, that occurred. It was horrible. They have a right to their suffering and, and they have a right to their hatred. And. You know, I, I you can't understand the African American experience without understanding slavery. There's no question. And so, like the Tucker Carlson types who want to just deny we're all individuals now because MLK or whatever. I just find this just totally dishonest and contemptible. Okay. So I actually do understand these things and I actually can empathize with that type of suffering in a way that a mendacious white person can't right uh i don't want to do that to white people like i th- i think I, there's no denying that if white supremacy is if we're trying to get rid of white supremacy uh, you know mm-hmm. me as a progressive or liberal or whatever we're trying to get rid of racism that means white people end up in a worse position at the end than when they started 
Now, it's possible we all maybe we, maybe we will all end up in a better position. Maybe maybe technology will allow us to all prosper and and drones will do all of our work and everything will be AI and and, and it won't matter and we'll all, we'll all be fine lots of food and space and whatever. That's possible. But right now I see why white people feel like they are losing power and standing in society because to some extent they are. And yeah. To ask them to, 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 and some of them are going along with it and signing it away because of lofty ideals that you find contemptible, and some of them are um, pissed about it. Um, but can't articulate it. But can't articulate it, which is where you yeah. come in. I understand. Uh, but so for me, uh, do you have any? Do you have any advice for me on how to? I guess. Um, I know you don't want to give me advice about how to get uh, angry white people on board with what I'm doing because you fundamentally disagree with it. But any advice, I guess, for... Um... Okay, are you so against my overall goals that you're against even me wanting to do advocacy for... I don't have any problem with what you're doing. It, you do you. Okay. And um, Great. So then do you have any advice I, overall then? I would say the, the I don't in a way need to give you this advice because I, I think if you are to succeed, it will be through this kind of dialogue. And okay. you wanted to do this. I mean, from, from what I understand from Ethan, you wanted to talk to me. I did. And so that that's great. It's a pleasant surprise. <laughs> it's a sh pleasant shock. So I think that is a good move. And that's a much more serious move than people who only want to demonize me or, or, or see me as a, you know, a monster. And so I, I think that, I think you're doing the right thing. We're all monsters. Well, that's true. I am a monster. Well, so am I. <laughs> I'm not. All right, let's. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> out. Jesus Christ. I <laughs> love me take some college. Do you, we have people here who want to talk to both of you. We talked about who wanted to talk to who. Okay. Well, why don't we get some callers in? Now, I don't know if they'll be. If they'll have the same friendly mission. We can't say for sure. No, I'm sure they won't. Uh, speak. Being that I'm going to subject my myself to your audience, Ethan, I'm going to actually grab a drink. Okay, grab it. So, go ahead and grab a drink. Right All right. <laughs> uh, I can read. Let me see. There may be a super chat directly for you. Let me look. Hold on. Um. Well. Um. Let's see. I mean, it's kind of for both. So. Well, they're asking me my playoff picks. Okay, I could give that too. But K. Max McDonald says, "Is the main difference between the two guests?" And I'll repeat it for Richard. But Mr. Girl believes these differences can be reconciled, and Richard does not—not not just racially, but politically. Every Twitch like screams Nazi while they get called communist. How does that get reconciled? Uh, I, um, I'm more of a um, ends don't justify the means. So, I believe they can be reconciled. I am a hopeful. But also, I don't ultimately care. That I would rather, um, I would rather die fighting for equality, if if you know, or fail fighting for equality or whatever, than uh, than win. Mm. I'd, I'd rather do what I think is the right thing than be driving the bulldozer. I don't want to be a martyr, um, but I would say what, that. But we, you, your actions. Do... Are you what? like, on some level, you're okay with being a martyr? It seems like, like yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I know you don't. I know you don't want to die, but like, but yeah. like you're definitely willing to take some fucking heat. I mean, yeah, sh shit, yes. dude. But it's not. I don't value my own suffering in the sense that, like, I don't think that you know. Oh, I you know. I th I think there's a lot of there's a kind of martyrdom complex in the alt right or, or whatever of like, you know. Let's just you know. Oh, at least you said it. You said that immigration's bad. And, you know, oh, you, you they ruined your life for it, but you went down swinging or something. I mean, I don't have I don't put any value in that. I don't put any value in just losing. No, I'm willing to take a lot of shit and I'm willing to kind of like have to fight through things and deal with a ton of setbacks and losses, whatever. But like my goal isn't just to say the right thing. And while I get bulldozed, I mean, my goal is to attack Win. the current system and ultimately triumph over it. And so, yeah. 
I don't put any value in martyrdom in the way that, say, Christian would. Um, yeah, I, I would say I don't either. It's more just that I place, a, uh, if I had to choose, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, a Rorschach. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I would rather be exploded in the snow. I guess I'm a wannabe Ozymandias. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And I think he's the villain. Yeah. Um, well, he's just misunderstood, Mr. Girl. Oh, I think I understand you just fine. I, 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 I think you're the villain of this story. Mm-hmm. No comment. Oh, but you can't oh. get away from the fact that uh, human beings are a herd animal. We're actually, uh, you know, Ed Dutton says this. Ed Dutton's a really brilliant guy. Um, it's, and, and I think E.O. Wilson said this as well. Uh, Ed's taking it from him. But we're not even just a herd animal in the way that, that like cattle or, or something like that. Like mm -hmm. we're almost a beehive animal yeah. in the sense that we are in some ways drones to another queen. Like we are deathly afraid, not just of, you know, not getting along with people and like cooperating on some basic level, but like we are deathly afraid of seeming racist or immoral or whatever and yeah. we we almost are there, there is a hive mind quality to humans that can't be underestimated and in that sense if you are attempting something that goes against human nature you will fail and so why I don't see, attempt it see i don't agree i th i okay. i think human nature is is to i mean without society or, or technology humans just rape and murder each other constantly but we have come a long way and shown that these impulses can largely be curbed controlled or uh these desires can be sated in other ways but so we're I, more I, monstrous than we were i mean no caveman tribe killed a million people in iraq you know i mean with technology and the the development mm -hmm. of the state We've become monsters on a grand scale. We actually That's now true. have an ability to destroy the entire planet and our own race. And and I, I'm sure we so will. So we haven't overcome all of these things that you think we've overcome. We've just been able to enact them on a much grander and horrifying scale. Uh, that's true, but also um, when we are when we are civilized. Uh, we're much more civilized. So I, I will give you that, yeah, the, the amount of murders we can... Well, there's also just more people to kill. So I actually, if there had been 7 billion people then, how many, how many hunter-gatherers... would have been 7 billion rapes. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I, if, yeah, if you had 7 billion hunter-gatherers uh, yeah. all thrown into the jungle, they'd probably kill the fuck out of each other. So I don't, I don't know if I agree with you. Okay. But people I see... I see maybe more than you think, but... I think you actually agree with my point about technology, even though it is rather disturbing. Like, we, no. we basically, it's 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 Kubrick's. It's like the op or not the opening scene, but one of the yeah, early yeah, scenes yeah. from two thousand one of, of throwing yeah. the bone up into the air, and it switches directions, interestingly, and and becomes a spaceship, which mm -hmm. does have a kind of ominous quality. Yes. you know, circling the planet, like it almost looks like it could. It's a missile satellite or something but the know? human race is going to die out would, one way or the other it has like would it adore we, we have to say, go extinct like, so my so i guess i just go, i always go back to what do i want to be doing when we go extinct well i mean we have to go extinct but wouldn't we like to go extinct in the process of building a higher type of human being i don't think so that's that see now you sound like a eu like, eugenic. You sound like the yeah. I hear. I, oh, I know what you mean. You sound yeah. like the obelisk. You you scare me. That scares me. I don't. I don't want that. Okay. I don't want that. I want. <clears throat> I want racial. The kind of racial entropy that you said would be terrible. I think in in, in a different interview, where if enough people fly around, fucking each other, eventually, all the races are going to disappear. And the only way to prevent that from happening is to actively work against it i think which is what you want to do and what um zionists want to do and all all kinds of different groups want to do 
I am fine with all the races disappearing because I don't have any. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Um. So okay, my last question for you. Um. Shit. If if that were to happen, and it were to mean more peace and cooperation. What would you think of that? If if whiteness peace and cooperation, what good has ever come from peace? <laughs> you want to justify? I mean, I, I'm sorry if I'm just gonna like. Oh, I'm saying peace is good. Quote that that, that I don't. Gonna, no, I'm not sure. I agree. Peace is good. Or happiness. I know. Is good. I see that. Only I, I think great that, those achievements the, come out of struggle and strife. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, I don't know, like a great war can justify any cause. You know, I mean, existence. Sometimes on I this worry, planet. I worry about this about you that sometimes I think you want the war first and a justification second. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I think what to, to put it in Nietzschean terms, I and, and look, you might not like this. It might seem a bit unfair. I think what you are strav striving for in this yeah. kind of mixed race, inherently happy Marvel movie watching global population where Krispy no Kreme one eating Krispy Kreme eating motherfuckers yeah. <laughs> that you want to bring about. Yeah. Um, that, that are they all kind of get along and they all in a way kind of think the same they're all almost like one big planetary herd i i think you want exactly what nietzsche was referring to by the last man and i want exactly what he is referring to by the overman or superman or however you want to describe it that is someone who really is going to leave humanity as it is in the dust a higher a higher stage of civilization that comes after the cataclysm. So you would rather be uh, a eugenically advanced race or people with, uh, if even if that entails war and bloodshed, than be uh, a Krispy Kreme eating Marvel movie watching. I would rather not exist at all than be a Krispy Kreme eating Marvel. This is coming from the guy who says Man of Steel is better than Richard Donner's Superman, by the way. Just to <laughs> remind everybody who, who, who we're fucking dealing with here. <laughs> okay. <That's funny. laughs> all right, now. I got, let me, I got um, my answer. All right, let me ask some of these, uh, some more of these super chats. We got callers to the call room is actually full. Um, K Max McDonald says for both guests, what might you love about America historically or right now? And what is our weakness? Uh, what should America be to you going forward? Or, or, I think what do you love and what's our weakness? I think that's a, a good question. What, what, do you, what would you say, Richard? I, I do actually love that myth of the West. I, I, I think I, I expressed that earlier. I think that is something that's uniquely American. You can't really find that in Europe or any other other place. Maybe you could find it in Russia, like going to set through Siberia, but it's uniquely American and I and I do have a romantic fascination with it. That Frederick Jackson Turner like America. What's our major weakness? I mean, our major weakness is that this empire will do itself in through its own ideals and in inherent contradictions. Uh, go ahead, Max. Uh, free speech. That's my favorite thing about America. Now, what about our biggest weakness? Um, I I kind of agree with uh, Mr. Spencer here on some some level that we we may be undone by hypocrisy in that we want to be this world dominating force but also pretend that we're Mr. Rogers at the same time. <laughs> and I think that uh, I'm not saying we should become like Spartans or something, but I think, I think some way to 
reconcile that. I guess that's our weakness, like in an inter international level. I would say our big, our biggest um, weakness at home is, I don't know, probably um, economic unfairness and and bigotry. Maybe the the combination of the two and how they intersect with each, with each other. Yehuda says this. Ralph and Spencer, what are your NFL playoff picks? I predict Bucks versus Bills in the Super Bowl and many great hey Twitter world. OJ Simpson takes for the next few so, weeks. I got Chiefs. Ethan, you're, you're a Cowboys fan, right? Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. They play the Bills, who is my fiance's. That's her team, actually, the Bills. Uh, okay. The Bills yeah. look good. I, I even Cowboys, though, thank God that was uh, not good. Well, I was, uh, it was funny. I was actually in Boston with this um, cool guy, and uh, we watched that Patriots game where they beat the Bills, and they ran, like, I think they threw the ball three times or something. It was like totally old school football in very cold weather. I, I'd say it's one of the better games I've ever, I've ever seen, actually. It's really memorable. Just Belichick just won. Now yeah. Belichick got destroyed last week. Last week he did. Um, I have to say the the Cowboys. I mean, I grew up in Dallas. I'm I'm kind of an inveterate oh, yeah, that's Cowboy right. fan. It's like Pavlovian. Um, I, I just the mediocrity just really disturbs me. It's like get McCarthy out of there. This well, can't... it's like it's McCarthy and and look, I actually like the guy. I I like Dak Prescott. I think he's actually a good guy at heart, but. His ceiling is there. And so it's kind of like I would rather just burn it down yeah. and then start over than just be constantly slamming up against the ceiling. Again, I, I actually think Jack is, is a, you know, he's a good guy and he's like a team leader, but it's just the ceiling is is there. And so it's it's going to be this over and over again. It's he's like, like you know. Tony, it's a Tony Romo situation. I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, it's like exact replay. He's only going to get – actually, Romo had a little bit more success maybe even. Uh, yeah, but, and Ro Romo was more you know I mean? like fun. It's a certain ceiling. He was yeah, so no. wild, you know. Yeah. Like, he'd throw like a horrible interception, and then he'd like make some pass that you're like, all right, that's like literally – Well, when you lost, awesome. he was fun, you know? whereas like Jack's yeah. so managed, it seems like. He's kind of like, boring. Yeah. And I, I – you know, I don't have it, – it's not personal. I just – and it's not like some black quarterback thing. He's he's. It's not about race at all. But it's just I I I see it. He he has a limit, and they can't go further. And I just wish they would just burn it down and get a quarterback because it's like who's going to win these Super Bowls? It's going to be Tom Brady. It's going to be Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be Patrick Mahomes. It, you know Josh Allen. It's it's gonna. You have to have a guy who can like lift your team. I don't think he's getting to that top level. Oh, he's just... not. He, he'll never be there. And it's he kind of lucked out in, in a weird way. And he, he like, he inherited a team that was a run first team and it made him look really good. And I think people thought he was actually good, but he's not. I mean, he's not so, bad. He's definitely uh, not bad. Uh, it's just nice. Nah, not top of, uh, let's see. Yehuda says, Ralph strikes me as a rum and coke guy. Spencer strikes me as a bourbon neat guy. Other guy strikes me as a natty light drinker. Is this correct? Yeah, I actually got the bourbon like, need here. Yeah, I don't see. drink alcohol. Are That's good? good of you. That's thank you. That um, is that you have more self control than I do, perhaps. <laughs> Max McDonald says, for both guests, is it true race can be both real and a social construct? It has biological reality, but it can also be used as a social construct. I would yeah, say that would. in in day to day life, it's usually just identified as a social construct and how people look, but you could also, you know, genetically draw lines between races if you wanted to on a DNA level. Yeah, I mean, I think there there absolutely is a biological quality to race, but I I, I would take the the term social contract and construct in a little bit of a different direction, and I would say that there there is a kind of spiritual component to race that we add to it, and you know, it's like what is it? You know, we can go through the numbers or the DNA charts or whatever about race or the IQ charts about race, and all that 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 is real. I don't deny that, but like what it means to be white actually is something spiritual. And I, I do think that the movement has kind of left that out. It hasn't really pursued the spiritual qualities of what it means to be us. And we're not just biological entities who like commit crime at certain rates and score this on an IQ chart. I, and some, on some level I could give a shit about it, all of that stuff. Uh, it really, we need to be endowed 
with a constructed spiritual core that comes from the top. And it's not just about who we are as biological entities. All right, now let's see. There's a couple more, but I'll, I'll get to those in a sec. Let's bring on some callers. Uh, and uh, let me do this. Uh, you can still hear, right, Richard? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. All right, cool. Uh, all right, let me. Uh, Dalton Claude Felter, go ahead. You're live. Oh, wait. Yeah. Go ahead, Dalton. You're live, sir, on the kill stream. What is up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I pretty much just wanted to. Uh, I have a question to ask Richard Spencer here. What? Okay, so uh, do you have animosity towards America first since you are so washed up and irrelevant now? No. Not at all. Hey, I don't want to do. I don't want to do fucking hostile callers. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. Being hostile. I, look, here's the thing. Okay. I don't want to. No, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't want to do this. If, I am if, America first. I stream here on Cozy, right? Oh, and great. What's your, you? what's your? What's your? What's your URL? Tell us. Where can we? What's your? What's your Patreon? Where can we send you money? I don't. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to do this. Well, look. If you, I, I just want. I just want to ask Richard Spencer some honest questions. No, you don't. You're not asking a good faith. I do. I do. All right. Well, then let. I'll move on to my next. If one. I, if I could look. If as a Jew, if I can be good faith with Richard oh, Spencer, right. and you can't, you're a fucking pussy. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Okay, well then how about I, I address something that I watched today on stream, okay? In your conversation with uh, J uh, JFG, I think, what, yesterday? Yeah. Am, am I correct? Yeah, yeah yesterday they did. Com. Was that serious or, like, do you really just not know? What? That this is Cozy.TV. I did not know that. I'm sorry. Oh, you got him. You you showed I him. Know, I was just wondering because it seemed really weird. I don't know. Why right. does that seem um, weird? I, God damn it. Though, you claim that Ralph, Nick's irony and jokes. Will you please kick this guy. Right. But doesn't this constantly well, growing I'm audience and IRL political activism prove otherwise? Um, what was the question about Nick's ability to um, engage people IRL? Is that your question? Well, no, no. You said that the irony and the jokes and the memes were hurting the dissident right. Right. But but Nick has a large audience and has engaged in IRL yes. activism. Is that what you're saying? Yes. OK. Those two things aren't really incompatible. I have never denied. I've actually been very fair and objective about Nick. I think he has an organic audience. And he is he has ridden a wave. There's no doubt about it. But I would say that the, you know, jokes are fine, of course, but the the irony and the kind of lack of ideological co coherence means that the movement will be inherently meaningless on some level. I, I don't I mean, I don't see that because I, I think Nick brought something to the right that was consistency uh, that was very clear in its in its approach. Right. He, he offered real political solutions to very complex issues and was able to garner support off of that. That's that, fine. That, that sounds like platitudes, what I would what I would say that's interesting about Nick is that um, I, I'm. He, I'm not simping for Richard. Stream, I'm simping for kind of civility and not being crowd. a fucking he's a white nationalist. You know, pussy. He's, got, he's he's down with the JQ and the race. I'm simping for so honesty. On. But when you actually look at the issues, there's no real daylight between him and the GOP. You know, the GOP, at least the vast majority of it, supported things like stop the steal. And and so on. I can't if you're just going to support Trump at the end of the day, then all the jokes aside, all the irony aside, all the little, you know, cookie memes or whatever aside, you are just a GOP operative. Like there's no real difference between him and conservatism, Inc. And I would just say that maybe you could think about that as good faith, I, 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 constructive criticism. False. I mean, Nick has has endorsed candidates that directly align with the America First movement and its ideology. Um, Nick has well, who are those people? been very vocal about his criticism towards Donald Trump, especially. Okay, that's fine. Who are, who, are, who are the people who are 
like ideologically pro america because i want to know i don't know what america first ideology is i would say who are those people who are your favorite politicians i would say go smart 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 is our guy okay good luck with that well why 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 would you disagree with that wendy rogers yeah that's another one good luck with that i mean it's fine Uh, he's not being honest if he's not being honest to me then he's not being honest there's nothing i can fucking do about it all I can do is ask I, I don't questions know and talk. Your claims just don't seem to add up. I mean, you're saying that he's able to garner an organic audience and apparently, you know, do all of this really great stuff. But then you turn around and you say that it's not effective or it's not doing what it's. I didn't say it was not effective in the long run. Like what it's is ultimately meaningless. Angle? But, you know, look, if you want to get in a, you know, comparison, yeah. look, you like yeah. Nick and you dislike me. That's fine. You know, more the merrier. I, I, I don't. It's not a big deal, man. I mean, like, I'm not. If you want to be a Nick fan and you think oh, that no, that's no, moving, no, you're, right. you're right. It's really, it's not a big deal. You're right because you right. are. You washed up and irrelevant. Ah, you yeah. haven't been relevant for four years. I mean, that's just true. Okay. I don't. Well, think why are you talking about me? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I always find I, I, whenever I tweet something, there's always one of you guys tells me I'm irrelevant. And it, it is kind of amusing that uh, yeah, you're yeah. constantly telling me that I'm irrelevant. Look, man, I want to say this. Let's funny. just end, let's just oh, end, God, let's God. end the call and let's just say go, this. Go ahead, you're, get a your... Nick, you're a Nick fan, and you don't like what I do. It's it's cool. All right, go ahead, Ralph. Real, say what you want. I'm, I'm going to get all some right. more calls. In. Uh, yeah, Richard Spencer's a faggot. That's pretty much all I need to say. God bless. Oh, God. All right, listen, I, I, Ralph. If you're going to let people do that, I have to I have to leave because I don't want to get fucking banned from YouTube. Well, I mean, I didn't let him do it. I, I well, you knew he was going to do it, and you fuck it. You did let him. You did let him do it. So if I don't, I don't want any more hostile callers. Like they can't, they can't handle their shit. And it's fine if they're bad I or critical. Them, I just told them like in college before I come on the show instead you know, of talking about it on air. You I, I also, w- I wish I could just tell this to them as a group. Like, you guys are Nick fans. That's cool. You don't like me. That's fine. Like, let's just kind of like move on. Because if that's all you're going to say, it's just well, not really productive. You know? course, he was saying throw him off at the beginning. That wasn't the right move. Uh, you got dialogue. Well, I mean, I don't agree. I'm the host. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, now, let's <laughs> let's take another caller. Uh, General Septic, go ahead. Hi. Uh, so this isn't going to be a contentious call. Um, this question is for both Richard and Mr. Girl. Um, looking back at both of your works over your entire careers are you guys proud of all of it not necessarily everything specific but like overall are you proud of what you've done um there there's i have certain regrets in my life i i am i I have certain there are there are definite things that i'm very proud of i don't know what to say you look back on your life and you live long enough you look back in your life and you have I don't know. You, you kind of look back at yourself and you almost feel like you're looking at a different person sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say. I mean, I think it's, it's mainly about not just like being proud of it, but it's about like constantly moving forward and constantly questioning yourself and being self-critical and, and trying to get at a higher stage of development. I think that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but like, what would you like to be remembered by? I I hope that a hundred years from now, people are reading pieces that I've written, and they'll be reading my book whenever it comes out. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. I'm proud of myself. So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> did, did you have something for uh, for Mr. Girl, or are you done there? Oh yeah, it was the same question to him. Okay, yes. okay, go. Oh, okay, that's it. I'm so far so good, but uh, okay. I'm sure I, I'm sure I'll look back. Uh, You're killing. I've, I've only been making content online for like four years, so. Um, yeah. Your appearance is on the iconic kill stream. I think. I think we, uh, yeah, I regret. I regret every time I've come on the kill stream. But other than <laughs> that, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, General Septic. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Great show, Ralph. Appreciate you. All right, now, let's see. 
Uh, okay, I don't even know where to go with this. Uh, <laughs> Sad theist, go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, go Yo, what up? Yo, what's up, man? I, I first want to say that I don't know why this faggot. Uh All right, listen, I got I got to go, guys. Mr. Spencer, it was excellent talking to you. Uh, I really I really appreciate you talking to me. Um, thank you. Yeah, you said enough. Like, yeah, Mr. Girl, yeah, it was my pleasure. And uh, um, you got your I, you got your interview. See you later. I'll I'll let Richard talk in a minute, but uh, I, I think you've said enough. Oh, oh you're oh you. <laughs> oh, please don't kick me off the kill stream. Please don't boot me. Jesus Christ, this motherfucker. I can thank him on Twitter. Or I'll fi I'll figure out a way to get in touch with him. Ah. Well. Um okay. I think I need to actually go to YouTube to look at the chat for real. He voshed me. He voshed me. I guess I was leaving, but like, YouTube says it's kosher to say it. Well, I don't, I don't fucking care. I don't, I don't want. Uh, one slur leads to another. That's a gateway slur. He clearly he's not screening the callers. He has no mod team. He has no idea what he's fucking doing. So I don't, I don't want to be. I don't want to be part of it. Uh, wait, this isn't on Twitch. Uh, okay. Uh, would I talk to Jared Taylor? I don't know who that is. Nick Fuentes. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up for talking to Nick Fuentes. Oh, thanks for the $5, by the way. I appreciate it. Or, well, shit, five pounds. Thank you. Uh, that was way better than talking to Vince James. Like no binders. Like we could just talk about our ideas and where we differ. I, I that's all I wanted. It was, it was exactly what I wanted it to be like. Do you have to do this stuff through Ralph? He, he told me <laughs> he got very, I, I didn't have, I didn't know that Richard Spencer was on Twitter. I would have just uh, contacted him directly. Um, I think I'm done with Ralph. Uh, uh, after that, we got in some contentious debate or, or, or fight before the Richard Spencer thing about it. So yeah, um, I think I'm done with the kill stream. Uh, no, I don't have to do it through the kill stream. Uh, I've got other channels now. Oh, I just talked to Nick Fuente. Wait, was really? Yeah, no more, no more kill stream. Uh, Richard said I acted in good faith. Yeah, uh, we just have different goals, and he finds mine abhorrent, and I find his abhorrent, and you know, I guess it is what it is. Oh, why is my something's weird with my mic? Okay, I'll figure that out later. Trust Mr. Girl, $10. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I can't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, that wasn't Nick. Yeah, I didn't think it was. You can't trick me. The days of you guys being able to trick me all the time are over. Killstream bridge burnt. Yeah, it was fucking... It was on fire already. I just didn't want to make a big deal out of it. Uh, Fifteen dollars. Get a haircut. No, I can afford to. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Dest five dollars. Jared Taylor is a very demonized person, but he is actually quite polite, and I think it would be a good conversation. Okay, well I'll check into that. Uh, yeah, I, I I've got like a growing list of people that I'm supposed to talk to, so uh, or supposedly supposed to talk to. Fifty dollars. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. What a great chat. Thank you. Yeah, I think it I think it went well. 
Uh, he's mad because of how fast you're outgrowing him, baited with a planted collar, and then set up the last line. You think so? You think it was planted? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to get all paranoid. Whatever it was, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I told him in DMs, I was like, listen, I'm at the point where, like, I don't have to listen to, like, stupid people scream slurs at me uh, in front of people and sit there with a fucking smile on my face trying to think of a clever response. I, I, I don't know why Richard Spencer is doing that either. Like, he, I, I feel like he's always done that. And, like, uh, at a certain point, you just shouldn't talk to people. Be, not, not because of their ideology, but because they're not... There's no way to come across looking good in a conversation. Not looking good, but, like, you can't even say what you're trying to say. Like... The whole Vince James conversation was terrible. That was my fault, though. Um, I mismanaged that totally, and I didn't set it up right, and I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that could happen. Basically, this was uh, five dollars from Ivan Blingwersin. This was a something new and interesting, but I found myself liking him as a person, and don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I think it's a good thing in the sense to know that, like, d don't decide your ideology based on how much you like someone as a person. Because I find his ideology fucking terrifying. But, like, as a person, actually, something he said in another interview, he was like, we're talking about individuals. So, like, you and I could have a beer together, but history doesn't happen in individuals. It happens in groups and in ideology. So, like, um, yeah, the people... People who do and think horrible shit and who spread horrible ideas and who want to do horrible shit, they're not all going to be, like, people who can't sit down and have a conversation with you. So, um, yeah, it's a confusing thing. But, I mean, I like, I, I hate Trump's ideology and I, I hate Trump as a politician, but, like, as a person, like, he, you got to admit, he's got likable moments. It's just confusing. Uh, $10. Who are you interviewing next? From Max L. Thank you. Are you going to start dual streaming? I don't know. Um, uh, I've put in a partner application with Twitch. So I'm going to see what kind of deal they're willing to make. And then probably decide based on that. Um, but yeah. I mean, if I've got a thousand... I've got 1,200 people watching right now. I feel like that gives me some uh, leverage. So like... If Twitch wants me to be exclusive, then I'm going to uh, need them to, you know, make me want to be exclusive. They want monogamy. Uh, $10 from Neff. I really enjoyed the conversation. I hope you keep trucking. Thank you. I hope so, too. $5 from Farlato. The kill stream is shit. Glad to see you dissociate from them. You deserve, body. You deserve better. Love you, buddy. That's uh, Love you, buddy. Be safe. Be careful. Also, are you a practicing Jew? No, I'm not a practicing Jew. Uh, my, my, all, my grandparents aren't even practicing Jews. I've got... No. Not at all. Uh, $5 from Derek Thurving. Good job. Very proud. Would love to discuss religion spirituality with you. You and Spencer were near it, but that's the core. Twitter at Punished Thane. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Feel free to tweet at me. But uh, I'm, I'm not setting up um, private calls at this time but I appreciate the donation. Uh, $5. Bring Destiny in to get his take on this talk. Bring Dest is Destiny. Does he want to be brought in? You always say that. Like, I can just snap my fingers and Destiny just fucking appears. They, it ain't like that. Is he streaming right now? I feel like it's pretty late over there. Yeah, he's not streaming. Uh, okay. I thought he was too guarded and optics conscious for this to be all that meaningful, but I think you could get something special out of another round or two with him. <clears throat> uh, he was guarded. I think he's always a bit guarded. I think he's just used to people like railing on him. I feel like he's like almost in his natural element when people are like screaming at him and being fucking horrible to him. Um, yeah. So 
I think he also is just so I've seen I've seen uh, interviews with him where the person is super um, cordial, like David Pakman was very cordial at first and then just starts trying to like fucking stick the knife in his side uh, halfway through and trip him up and get him to contradict himself. And like, so, you know, um, this might just be like the best we're going to get for now. Mark Schmidt, this may have been your best conversation yet with the raid boss, no less. Thank, despite that, I'd bet that Twitch poll will shit bricks over it. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, I was pretty nice to him, but like... I think people should be nice to each other. I guess. Thank you. Five pounds from William Dare. Been a fan of yours before Destiny. Yeah! Glad to see you do so well, and you'll 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 surpass him in a year. I'll so I'll, you think I'll surpass Destiny in a year? Wow, that would be a lot of. Uh, that would be great. Then I can prove to Destiny that I am his loyal, loving friend by not uh, fucking him over somehow. Viceheart, $10. Would love to hear Spencer pressed on what he'd do with mixed race individuals and wonder if he'd ever concede that they tend to have more favorable health outcomes than monoracial purists. Thanks. Um, I think if the statistics show that, he'd probably say, he probably would agree, but I assume he'd say something like, but any society that encourages or allows these people to exist in them or whatever is doomed to fail. So it's not worth blah, blah, blah. I don't know. He doesn't, he doesn't strike me as the type to just flat out uh, deny statistics. Your cam is too big. Oh yeah, I'm too. I'm, I was. I was trying to match him. Okay, hang on. Oh. There we go. Yeah, this is more comfortable. So now I need my glasses. You haven't made it until you get Joe Rogan on. Okay. I would like to talk to Joe Rogan. I did start a rap song with the lyrics, Joe Rogan can suck my dick, but it's just a song. Alex Jones is banned and has been on Tim Tim Pool twice. Yeah. I don't really want to talk to Alex Jones. After he said in court that he's playing a character, I don't feel like there is much uh, to be gained from that. We need a setup tour of your computer. Uh, okay, I can do that when there isn't shit all over my desk. <clears throat> Damn, skipped my super chat. What? What? Wait. wait. Uh, how do I? We'll just say it again. K2, what was your super chat? Derek Thurving, $10. Thank you. Spencer mentioned his disdain for Puritan Calvinism. That's vital to understanding. Morality being more valuable than life itself is a deeply Christian concept that left the left is running on the fumes of. Yeah. Well, you lose your... You lose your life no matter what you do, but you don't have to lose your morality. So that kind of speaks to me. He said that in court. I believe, I believe, I'm not, uh, I, uh, I may be misremembering. My understanding is that his defense for the Sandy Hook defamation suit was that Alex Jones is a character he plays and that he's not to be taken literally that it's like satirical now i don't 
I don't know that that actually means that that's true, but just the fact that he's willing to say that, I don't know. I should, I'll look it up right now. Somebody, somebody look it up. You should hit up Sam Hyde for $3. Thank you. Yeah. I should hit up Sam Hyde. I need to watch more of his uh, stuff to understand him. K2, LOL, it's fine. It, and it was only $2. I just said to sub and watch literally all Mr. Girl content. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for paying me to advertise myself. Mr. Girl returns, you've shown me that the truth while valuable is mundane. Instead of arguing about the fact of the matter, it's so much more interesting to understand why the premises lay as they do. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that Richard Spencer uh, feels that way too, where it's like, we have probably a ton of disagreements just about even what is happening, but we also understand each other's basic like views well enough that I know what he thinks is happening and he knows what I think is happening and we can just like dispense with the binder fight and just go straight to like what does it mean or why do we feel the way we do ninja dragon read naruto read naruto how do I don't know how to say that I was saying naruto but I know that's wrong trust it's quality you remind me of the protagonist towards the end I don't know what that means. You should tell Destiny to talk to Richard Spencer. I don't really tell Destiny what to do. Not yet. Once once I get bigger than him, by, by the end of the year, though, I'll be fucking giving him assignments. Uh, Mr. Girl paid those callers to call in and advertise. Garrison Clark gave me $1.00. No message, no question, no compliment, no insults. Just one straight up dollar. Thank you. Is there someone I would refuse to talk to? Uh, Richard Spencer, I think, would be the, the person I would most likely just straight up refuse to talk to, and I didn't. So I think, I think um, honestly, like Alex Jones, like somebody who I feel like is not in good faith, or who I feel like is like whether Alex Jones is good faith or not I don't think he is but even if he is like he's not going to really con he's not like calm enough I don't think or doesn't want to be to like actually like connect with me and have like the kind of conversation I think I I think I shouldn't talk to people like Vince James not that I don't not that like I think his views are so abhorrent I don't want to talk to him but just like um it's just I'm not going to be able to like do my thing, basically. I'm not going to be able to have the kind of conversation I'm trying to have. If somebody refuses to be civil to me because of stuff I've said elsewhere or because of who I am or my race, then I don't think there's a point. It, it just argues against my whole idea that like we can like treat each other better. Crowder? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to Crowder. I'm going, it's my destiny to talk to Crowder. Destiny is my Crowder and Crowder is my destiny. Uh, Tucker Carlson, Carlson, yeah, that could, that could get into difficult territory. I feel like he probably wouldn't really let his guard down. Really like the art that you have for your channel. Oh shit, I just missed a super chat. God damn it. Is there a way I can go back and look at what that was? I don't know how YouTube streaming works. Uh, okay, whoever that was, just type in all caps what you said. Missed my super chat. Have you ever read the short story Cat Person by Kirsten Rupenian, all about sex, communication, and power dynamics? Feels like you could have written it. It sounds interesting. No, I haven't, but I will check it out, and thank you for the donation. Really like the art you have for your channel. That is Shaylin. That's my girlfriend. She does all the art. Um, you can follow her at SheBeeJeebies on Twitter. S-H-E-B-I-E-J-E-E-B-I-E-S. I'm following her and she's following me too, obviously. She's my girlfriend. I mean, you know, we're dating. 
Uh, gotta understand the religious. T Wait, I gotta read the super chats. YouTube Live sucks, but you're worth coming over for. Thank you. Thank you, Mick, Mick Pastor, for the $5. M4A now. Thank you. Alex Jones would be more interesting than any of us would think. Maybe. I Yeah, maybe. I don't. He also talks. Uh, I've noticed Richard Spencer will let you interrupt him. I think that's another important thing. Like, I like to interrupt people. And I like when they interrupt me. I think I think if it's like, if you get what I'm saying, and you already have a response, and you already know everything I'm going to say, just just go. Like, as soon as, as soon as you get what I'm saying, I don't need to talk anymore. I'm not talking, like, just to hear myself talk. Interview Tom McDonald. I'll have a fucking rap battle with Tom McDonald. I'm not going to interview him, though. I'm going to diss track that motherfucker. Probably not. But I think about it. Garrison Clark, five dollars. You've popped up in my e-circles as of late. Can you give your new listers a quick rundown? Who you are, what you believe, what do you do for a living? Uh, as of a week ago, I do this for a living. This is my job. Uh, who am I? What do I? What do you? What do I believe in? I believe in truth, justice, and the American way. And I believe that we should um, empathize with each other. And I believe that America is too polarized and the world is too polarized and too partisan. And that by being really honest about myself and who I am and how I feel and by people talking more about their feelings, then we can empathize across party lines and hate each other and hate ourselves less. That's, I'd say that's the kind of core thing. Uh, Higgins is here. Is your therapist a psychoanalyst? Your approach strikes me as informed by psychoanalysis. I love it. Thank you for the $5. I don't talk about uh, my mental health journey or really, uh, I guess I'll put it this way. I talk about my, um, my body and my health and my mental health um, kind of when I feel like it, but I don't really answer questions or respond to comments about those things. Um, so I'm not going to answer your question. I will say that um, my father and grandfather are psychologists, or my grandfather was a psychologist. So that's definitely informed um, and, and, and kind of behaviorist and Freudian leaning. So that's definitely informed how I think about these things as like part of my upbringing. And then I have a, a bachelor's in psychology as well. Shady Flakes, $5. Do you love black people? Yeah. Um, Uh-oh. Oliver Nordberg gave me 200 DKKs. But I don't know what that means. But it's money of some kind. So thank you. I appreciate it. I feel like that's $20. That's just a feeling now. 200 Denmark currency. It's like $30. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, whale. I was pretty stressed out about this one. I really didn't want to feel like I accidentally espoused his views. That's the concern with like platforming and talking to people. Um, I feel like I actually won't know. I feel like it went pretty well, but I probably won't know what I really think until like tomorrow when I've had some time to think about it. Talk with Brittany, the host of Politically Provoked. She's a former anti-racist liberal, recently turned white separatist because she's afraid of a race war. She's also part Jewish. Um, she has reached out to me, and I told her, basically, I don't want to. 
Um, and then we're in that panel together briefly. So I'll think about it more, but I kind of don't. I mean, I already talked to Richard Spencer. I don't feel like I, uh, that, I don't know. I think I probably won't talk to any like white supremacists or whatever nationalists for a while after this. Uh, $10 from Woot Baseman. You won't regret a conversation with Benjamin Boyce, a program for deprogramming. Um, yes, we are in touch, I think. I think we've been DMing and trying to set up a time. Um, but I haven't watched any of his stuff. So I need to do that before I completely commit. <clears throat> Mr. Girl, what is your takeaway from the conversation tonight? From... Uh, um, I, 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 I kind of went in feeling like just that racism is cynical and that, um, at least he admits that. I mean, yeah, he thinks I'm, he thinks it's deluded, delusional to not be racist. Racist under my broad definition. I know that he would not agree to this. Ethnostates and nationalism of any color, I think, are cynical. Um, my takeaway from Richard Spencer is that... Um, I think he is genuinely trying to figure out like what he thinks and how to accomplish it and how to express it. Um, he, yeah, he's a little optically careful around certain things, but he was more genuine than I thought he was going to be. Uh, and uh, I went in thinking that his views were completely horrifying and kind of evil. And I came out thinking his views are horrifying and evil, just like I thought they were going in. Uh, K2, do you ever watch your own VODs back? Yeah, usually when other people are commenting over them on Twitch. You know, I, I watch a lot of Irrelevant. Um, he probably thinks I hate him, but I actually, every time he reviews one of my streams, I just, like, sit back and, and relax to him, like, yelling at me for, like, three hours. I, I watch a lot of his streams on Twitch. $5 from King Prince. Read the gender narrative. You seem to believe that the only way you can get people on the left to listen to you is to throw other questioning voices. One of two for another $5, especially if conservative under the bus and say things like he sounds transphobic, all this other weird shit comes out. Oh, I see. You're, you're saying that I'm trying to throw conservatives under the bus to get liberals to listen to me to prove that I'm like left enough. Uh, I haven't thought of it that way, but, and I don't think I'm doing that, but it would be shitty if I were. I think I think it's more well I think I throw liberals under the bus when I'm talking to conservatives too. I think I'm always just trying to prove to people like whatever group you think I'm in that's making me say what I'm saying, I'm not. So like fuck them. I here's the parts that like the first right off the bat with Richard Spencer, I'm like I'm not a Zionist. So just take all of your assumptions about me based on looking at me or based on me being whatever and let's dispense with those. I think I think that's why I do that. Thank you, Tony, for five dollars. Well, five Canadian dollars. Five almost dollars. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Two dollars from damage control. This is the last of my money. Thank you. Uh, MX, is that? Saludos. What is MX? Mexican. But 20 watts. Those pesos? I don't really know what Mexican currency is. Mr. Girl, thanks for the quality content. Saludos. De nada. Ever play a Dark Souls game? Yeah. I've played some Dark Souls. I have Demon Souls on PS5. I can't really get into it, though. I don't like two things. 
I don't really like fantasy, and I don't like that the enemies just like fall down in the same animation every time. Those two things are pretty tough for me, so I don't know if I'm ever going to get through it. But I like really hard games, though. You know, I'm playing um, uh, Fallen Order, uh, and that kind of feels like Dark Souls, but like Star Wars. <clears throat> I'm enjoying that so far. Slaps McGee gave me $2 and said, you're one of the good ones. Thank you, Slaps. Uh, Bacchus gave me $5. Your background in psychology. Well, that explained why I have questions for you. I should just ask a therapist. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Oh, well, yeah, I'm making a video about Dr. K. And I have to address some similarities between our content because I do have the advice and confession streams. I can't help you. I can help you the way like a musician can help you or the way like an artist or like a speaker. I can't help you the way a therapist can help you. And if you need like real help, like we all need music and art and YouTube videos and stuff. So I want to provide that. But if you need a therapist, I cannot help you. I get and I'm getting an increasingly large number of emails and messages and requests for private conversations and offers to pay me for private conversations and i i am not your therapist and i cannot be i'm no one's therapist i'm not even a therapist um yeah so go to therapy laura uh, lawson harrison gave me five dollars you're a breath of fresh air i've been talking about how the term transphobic is applied and that it being to describe denying claims ideology is bad yeah, because there's people who actually like hate trans people, like a lot of them. And uh, I would say those people should probably be called transphobic. Um, and there's there's overlap. There's a lot of people. All, uh, transphobic people also like will get in arguments and debates about like science and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I think. Calling people bigots when they're not really being bigots is not a good idea. That random guy, 146, for five dollar four ninety nine. What's your top three favorite bands? Uh <clears throat> Eminem. Okay, this is I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just going to say three that I like off the top of my head. Eminem, Prince, uh, Portishead. Eminem and Prince are probably definitely my top two. I probably have a lot of tied for three. I don't get the obsession with attacking Dr. K. It's not obsession. I attack a lot of people. It's just his turn. That's all. Uh, Five dollars from Hacktron. Uh, it's also, it's not an attack. I'm not trying to like hurt him. I'm trying to just get his license revoked. No, I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> criticize what he's doing and hopefully get him to change it a little bit. Hacktron, five dollars. To start this off, I like your goals. Uh-oh. This is one of those messages. However, here it comes. You know, I get a... I get so many messages like this. However, do you think your method could be hijacked to make abhorrent ideas seem less extreme? Yes. That's what I was afraid of. That's what I was afraid of going into this. That, I mean, that's the downside to empathy. Because, like, I'm trying to humanize people because I think dehumanization is bad. But it is possible for someone to trick me into thinking that they're showing their human side, but actually they're just siphoning attention or viewers for themselves or spreading their message in a way, in like a introductory way so that you like, you don't really think about it. Wait, I just saw a $50. Oh, I think that was an older donation. I didn't just miss a fifty dollar donation, did I? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm afraid of that for sure, and uh, that is that is definitely. I mean, if 
Twitch is going to criticize me for doing this stream, that will be their criticism. And that is a danger that I have to look out for. I saw Portishead live in a festival a few years ago. They burned a picture of David Cameron on stage. I don't know who David Cameron is. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I wish they would make more albums, but I like pretty much every song they've ever made. Uh, he attacked Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro to try to climb on YouTube. Uh, that's not exactly accurate. I have attacked Steven Crowder because he drives me insane. And I have a, uh, he's my nemesis. I have a, I have a spiritual connection with Steven Crowder, like Batman and the Joker. Ben Shapiro, I did attack to try to climb on YouTube. That's true. I mean, uh, the, my criticisms of them are genuine, but yeah, I, I used to make more like videos attacking people and I regret m most of them. Not Steven Crowder though. Um, not, not that I don't, I, I don't want to take them back, but I just, they felt kind of ugly and kind of, I was more like partisan left at the time. And I, um, I'd never had anybody make a video attacking me either. So I figured they just like didn't care, but now I know, uh, it kind of fucks with you. And so I, I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Um, Dr. K, I will, I'm not going to attack. Um, so like kind of personally, I don't know how personal it was before, but I wasn't thinking about it. I, I, I don't want to attack him. I want to criticize what he's doing. I think, and, and I, and I don't like, if you want to make a video attacking me, go for it. Like, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't. I just, uh, if I'm going to criticize someone now, I want to be a little more thoughtful. Roland DeShane. Looming very regal and industrious tonight, Max. Have you looked into binaural beats while sleeping for lucid dreaming? That's a terrifying s sentence to write with no um, punctuation. Keep an open mind. I forgot the guy's name who pioneered it. Look into it, though. Lucid dreaming, huh? You want me to do a lucid dream review? If only I could stream my dreams. You know what I want to do? I want to review the HoloLens. I'm trying to find a way to rent a HoloLens. I feel like I could make a really weird video with that. I'm not sure. Okay. 15,000 yen? Is that yen? Do you hate everything? Well, thank you. Do you hate everything about your Massachusetts upbringing? I also hated lame liberal platitudes, but there's also a brutal New England honesty that I see and appreciate in you. Um, no, I don't, I don't hate it. I, no, I love Massachusetts. Um, I hated the kind of like, I hate when, I hate when progressives go so far that they're like anti-free speech and super conformist and marching in lockstep and terrified of being themselves. That, that I hate while telling you that they're all about being yourself. Um, but like most of it, I, I liked. <clears throat> Your original VR video is great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the uncensored valve index review with full nudity is on my website. It's pretty good. One of my favorite videos I've ever made. Oh, it's South Korean won about $12. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I should have known. That's a W. Oh, I work with a HoloLens. Oh, okay. Is it cool? Do it like, I feel like I, I feel like you could do all kinds of weird shit making a HoloLens video. <clears throat> Uh, thoughts on Hassan? I don't really watch much. I don't. I don't have any thoughts really. Do you think you'll ever put a chat on your screen? No, I don't think so. I like keeping my screen pure because so many of the conversations I'm trying to have are so intimate. I just think like just now, like it, like trying to like 
connect with Richard Spencer and like understand him, like and then having shit popping up on the stream, I just feel like it doesn't work. Uh, I have seen ContraPoints videos. Um, I think she's pretty articulate and smart and interesting. It's funny watching her get like in trouble with other progressives. You're holding your water bottle wrong, unsubbed. Dang. Well, thanks for the $2. HoloLens 2 is only $3,500. Only $3,500. Yeah, that's a lot. Well... Uh, I would interview ContraPoints. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Justin, good to see you, sir. I'm not going to twitchify my visuals. Don't worry. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I'm going to go recuperate from this conversation. Despite thinking it went well, it is a lot. Uh, so thank you for coming. I hope you all have a good night. Uh, tomorrow I will be on uh, Prime Kai's small council at 9 Eastern on Twitch. Um, and then my advice and confessions will be Sunday at 8 Eastern on Twitch. And then...